let's dive into our up for debate alexis just you know this is a very negative episode i, I didn't mean like. to put salt in the wound it just seemed important and it's now become increasingly relevant since i tweeted it out last wednesday so when you i believe when you tweeted it out right jonas burdine had returned um yes or not quite yet or he was expected to return I, right I, and he that was, was expected to return yep and that was um, from covid mind you that was, yeah. he was going to return and now He's hurt, as we mentioned, Correct. along with Jewel Erickson Eck, Jared Spurgeon again. Jewel Erickson Eck skating with the team, so potential for him to return. Jared Spurgeon skating on his own, so potential for him to return soon. Rhodes doesn't sound good. Uh, yeah. That's all it, uh, all it is. That's Dean's favorite line. Doesn't look good, right? Like, well, no, Dean. It doesn't. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, your question was, which of those three um, is their absence most noticeable in Alexis? What, uh, what was your first thought? Um. I think it, you definitely, in my opinion, have to lean towards a defenseman, just seeing the way the wild have played through these injuries and kind of the way the, the pace of the game and the way these games have gone and the defensive holes and the, the things that the defensive holes have caused in the game is the most noticeable and the most detrimental in my opinion, um, to the stretch of hockey, the wild have been playing through injuries and COVID related stuff. Now narrowing it down between Jared Spurgeon and Jonas Brodeen is a tougher question. And, uh, Fred brought up the point a few episodes back about the fact that the wild were winning games without Jared Spurgeon. Now that's not to say that he's, you know, not important to the team. He's obviously very important, but they were finding ways to do it without him. It seemed the minute Jonas Brody was out of the lineup, those holes were exposed. And I I think the reason for that is just like doubling down on losing two of your best defensemen. That's hard to recover from. Um, I think if like just Brodeen would have been out and Spurgeon would have been in, it would have been not as noticeable. Uh, But the minute both of them went down, uh, it was a big deal. I'm going to go with Brodeen. Uh, My reasoning for it is because Brodeen is such a mobile defenseman, uh, one of the most underrated staters period in the NHL. Um, and I think you could see in the defensive lapses that the wild have had, um, a getting control of the puck has been one issue and breakouts have been another issue. And that's where Brodeen is so good at what he does. He's so, um, like calm, cool and collected back there. And his breakouts are just, I mean, he's so smooth with it that he makes it look so much easier than what it probably is. Um, so as much as I think Jared Spurgeon is a critical part to this team, I mean, he's wearing the C on his chest for God's sake. Um, but in my opinion, losing a guy like Brodeen um, has some irreversible effects on a roster. Um, and that's why that's the one I got to go with. What about you, Jesse? Definitely Brodes. And I think, you know, Alexis, you failed to mention why you would notice the defense more. It's because it's oh, here we go. <laughs> in the goaltending when you miss the solid here we go. So I'm just gonna, just gonna throw that out there. That little nugget. <laughs> um, no, I think definitely I would go Brodeen. I mean, certainly you do miss your captain. You miss Jared Spurgeon. You miss his calm, cool collectiveness. Um, you know, Jared Spurgeon, I think Molesky said it and Brodeen are, are two of the most underrated defensemen in the league without question. And we're not just saying that as Minnesota people. Like, yeah. I think it's genuinely true. And I would lean slightly more toward Brodeen for the sake of conversation I'll also say a Jewel Erickson Eck I think a guy like Jewel Erickson Eck really would have thrived against Boston um you know a very gritty game you want a guy that can get in under a player's skin and Jewel Erickson Eck is so good at that um and just that net front presence that he mm-hmm. brings I mean that I think has a lot to do with maybe a slight lack of, of scoring I mean you got guys that are going to the net certainly but Jewel Erickson Eck that's his prime spot so I mean I think you're definitely missing him again. Very exciting that he is looking at returning to lineup ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, So possibly get him back sooner, which would be very exciting. But yeah, I think those two, and again, you're missing Spurge. You're going to miss a guy like Kirill Kaprizov probably too. Yeah. That was uh, not a part of the options because he was fine. He was absolutely fine. And he's not fine. At the time, that was literally like the only three that were injured. And then it was like Talo went down, Kaprizov went down, Bukestad went down. I'm like, well, this is this argument isn't even fun anymore. I don't like it. (laughs) Not great. Um, Yeah, I got a little (laughs) fiddle playing. I don't even know. I, you know, small violin world. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's sad it's a bummer it's but it is it's that next up mentality you know I mean it sounds so trite and cliche but it truly is like now mm-hmm. you get to see what you have in Matt Boldy now you get to see what you have in Marco Rossi um and give you know guys like Connor Dewar a look as well and now you get to see why you should trade Kapil Kakinen um <laughs> and get a new goaltender in there. I'm, I'm doubling we're, down. We're this. about to find out what this team is made of very quickly uh, yes. in the next week or so. So it will be interesting time here in the season uh, because if they could pick up wins, will these guys, some of the, you know, bigger name players are injured. That's going to obviously do wonders to the Wilds' confidence. If they struggle, it's going to be like, okay, maybe our, our prospect pool isn't as deep as we originally thought or as good as we originally thought, or maybe they need more time. Um, so it's going to be a uh, wild Twitter. I'm already bracing for what wild Twitter is going to be like for the next like week and a half, two weeks. 
weeks because I know it's just going to be a shit storm and it's going to be stressful. So brace yeah. yourselves, everybody. <laughs> brace yourselves. Buckle up. Let's go, though. I mean, again, every team's going to have to go through it. It'll be fine. Let's all breathe. Just cry silently in the corner if you need to. It's, it's <laughs> 